Hello everyone, myself Dr. Parth Goswami and hope this video will find you all in a good health. Today we are going to discuss about the COVID-19 treatment. We will discuss some of the drugs that is useful in the COVID-19 treatment and we will discuss some of the investigation as well. I have made certain videos on the COVID-19 previously as well. You can check the playlist, right? So this is the in general informative video, right? It's an overview treatment video and uh, this video is made only for educational purpose, right? Don't uh, self-medicate yourself if you get infected with COVID-19, right? Discuss with your doctor and then start the treatment. So let's understand that uh, which are the general guidelines for the COVID-19 treatment. So friends, uh, we will discuss some of the drugs that is used in the treatment of COVID-19, especially during the day 1 to 7 of the COVID-19 infection. So suppose you got the infection from the COVID virus. Then from the day one, you can start the following medication after discussion with your doctor. So the first drug that is used in COVID-19 is a Febiflu, that is a Febipiravir, right? The loading dose is uh, 1600 milligram, right? It has to be given in the morning and evening or the day one. And from the day two up to the fifth, uh, five or sixth day, you have to give 800 milligram in the morning and evening. Uh, this particular medication is available in a 200 milligram then 400 milligram dosage right and in 800 milligram dosage so suppose you have the 400 milligram tablet with you then on the day one you have to take 1600 milligram morning and evening so you have to take four tablet in the morning and four tablet in the evening and then from the day two onwards you have to take two two tablet in the morning and evening so that is the dose of febipiravir second drug that is used in covid 19 is ivermectin now this particular drug uh, has to be taken only once a day right and the dose is 12 milligram and it has to be given for three to five days both these medications uh, seems to be antiviral medication right they can prevent the viral replication but still uh, certain guideline is not recommended recommended uh, recommended to use the febiflu and the ivermectin so discuss with your doctor that whether you should start with these two medication or not yeah third important medication that that has to be started in covid 19 is either doxycycline or azithromycin both these are antibiotics so the antibiotics uh, obviously it should be given to prevent the bacterial infection the doxycycline dose is 100 milligram twice daily for the five to seven days and the azithromycin dose is 500 milligram once a day for the five to seven days so the dose has to be given for five days or up to seven days right and obviously the fifth medication is paracetamol the commonly used brand name is dolo dolo 650 right so 500 milligram or 650 milligram both can be given maximum up to twice or thrice daily and it has to be given when you have the fever it is useful to control the fever right all right the most important medication that is uh, almost uh, commonly given to all the patients is uh, vitamin C and vitamin D, right? The vitamin C is a uh, antioxidant, right? It, uh, it is an antioxidant vitamin and it has to be given in the COVID-19. The dose is 500 milligram BD for the 15 to 20 days. And the com popular brand name is LIMC, right? It's a chewable tablet. It, it is available in the orange flavor. So it's a good medication. Vitamin C should be started. Another important vitamin that has to be given in COVID-19 is vitamin D, right? It's a most important to give the vitamin D as well. It can be available in the tablet as well as powder form, right? So if you purchase the powder form, if you purchase the sachet form of vitamin D, then the dose is 60,000 international unit that has to be given once a week, right? You have to dissolve it in a milk. It has to be taken with milk. It is uh, taken to be once a week for six weeks, right? So you have to purchase six to eight sachet, right? All right. And obviously in the COVID multivitamin has to be given, right? To boost up the immunity. So the multivitamins that can be used is because you'll said or zinc of it like that of uh, multivitamin can be used and it, it can be given up to one month, one to two month. All right. And now friends, uh, the most crucial medicine uh, that has to be used in certain patients are steroid, right? 
the steroid is a most crucial medicine and could be life i mean could prevent the mortality it could be life saving it is if it is used properly so first of all while using the steroid right the doctor has to keep in mind that it should not be given up to fifth or sixth day of your covid symptom right up to fifth or sixth day it is not given why because up to the one week the viral is replicating in your body right viral replication is ongoing so that's why at that time immunity suppressant drug should not be given steroid is one of the immunosuppressant drug right it prevent the cytokine storm by suppressing the immunity by suppressing the inflammation but it should not be given in initial days of your inflammation it has to be given on fifth or sixth day and it is only given remember friend it is only given if the bio markers for the covid-19 inflammation is high like that of crp right c reactive protein is a marker of inflammation in your body so if in your body inflammation is more if in your body crp is very high for example greater than 30 mg per deciliter right normal range is up to 6 uh, mg per deciliter right normal range is less than 6 but if it is more than 30 uh, then steroid can be added in your prescription and steroid can be given if oxygen level is below 93 if the patient is not able to maintain the oxygen level right the oxygen has to be measured by pulse oximeter portable pulse oximeter so if the oxygen remaining low and if the crp is constantly high then steroid can be add, added in your prescription otherwise if you use the steroid injudiciously then it can lower down your immunity and patient can acquire fungal infection particularly mucormycosis like that of life threatening fungal infection so use steroid judiciously don't self start the treatment with steroid all right this steroid can be given in the four way either in the meter dose inhalation either in the nebulization form either orally or injectable so the first modality is the meter dose inhalation right the inhaler is available right and it is a very safe to use right if you want to use the steroid then safest one is meter dose inhaler it has to be inhaled through the mouth right it has to be inhaled through the mouth and the common brand name that is used for mdi inhalation is the famous meter dose inhalers are foracort or budecort right they are the famous one that contain the steroid foracort or budecort and that has to be taken with spacer 8 to 12 puff 2 to 3 times a day right and it is a very safe because it doesn't generate any aerosol right the second modality is nebulization in which through the mask nebulization has to be taken and respule has to be added in the device right the respules has to be used for nebulization and the respules available are budecort or levolin right that can be used but the nebulization can generate aerosol and that's why it is not preferred mode of treatment the preferred mode of treatment is meter dose inhaler all right you can give oral tablet as well right for the treatment of covid-19 when the inflammation is more and particularly oral tablets given in the form of either prednisolone steroid either prednisolone steroid or methyl prednisolone the popular brand name is medrol right the methyl prednisolone or prednisolone can be given as a oral tablet for controlling the inflammation and remember my friends that steroid should never be stopped suddenly if you are taking the steroid the dose has to be tapered gradually gradually you have to decrease the dose and then stop it and that's why it should be given under the observation of your physician the dose of medrol is 8 mg starting dose is 8 mg it can be available in 16 mg as well and this medrol can be taken twice or thrice daily right two to three times in a day and gradually it has to be stopped when your crp goes down all right now suppose the patient is having the severe inflammation and he need oxygen then injectable steroid is preferred one and while giving the steroid therapy you have to be take care that sugar monitor sugar monitoring is very critical because the methyl prednisolone can elevate your sugar level the steroid will 
रेज योर शुगर एंड टू कंट्रोल द शुगर ओरल एंटी हाइपोग्लाइसेमिक ड्रग और इंसुलिन इंजेक्शन माइट बी नीडेड राइट एंड दैट्स वाई द ट्रीटमेंट अंडर फिजिशियन मॉनिटरिंग इज एडवाइजेबल और राइट एंड नाउ वी विल सी सर्टिंग सिम्टोमेटिक और सपोर्टिव ट्रीटमेंट फॉर कोविड नाइन्टीन राइट दिस आर द मेडिकेशन दैट इज यूज इन कोविड बट सर्टिंग सपोर्टिव ट्रीटमेंट ऑल्सो नीडेड फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ द पेशेंट इज हैविंग थ्रोट पेन इफ द पेशेंट इज हैविंग फेरिंग चाइट इज राइट दैन बीटाडिन गार्गल थ्री टाइम्स अ डेली कैन बी यूजफुल इट हैज़ टू बी गिवन फॉर सेवन डेज राइट द गार्गल हैज़ टू बी डन विथ बीटाडिन डायल्यूटेड बीटाडिन विथ वाटर ऑल राइट नाउ द मेन अनदर इम्पॉर्टेंट इन्वेस्टिगेशन इन द कोविड नाइन्टीन इज अ डी डाइमर राइट इट इज अ मार्कर ऑफ कोगुलेशन इन योर बॉडी सो सपोज द डी डाइमर इज इलिवेटेड सपोज the microclots form in your body then your the d dimer will be elevated right then the d dimer will be elevated so if the d dimer is high then anticoagulant need to be added in the prescription the oral tablet oral anticoagulant that can be given is rivaroxaban dabigatran or apexaban right any of three drug can be given for 10 to 14 days and if you want to give injection right if the patient is not affordable then enoxaparin like that of injectable low molecular weight heparin can also be given its dose is 0.6 mg so either injectable low molecular weight heparin or oral anticoagulant can be added if your d dimer is high now for the cough and common cold right the covid patient will definitely have the cough common cold like that of allergic symptoms so to control that montelukast and fexofenadine combination drug can be given for 10 days the popular brand name is elagra m that is to control the cough and cold suppose the patient is having excessive cough in his chest then for the expectoration of it palmoclear tablet or syrup can be given uh, you know this palmoclear tablet contain the acibrofilin and the acetyl cysteine uh, within it so it can be given it can helpful in expulsion of cough but if the patient is having dry cough uh, then cough suppression is needed that contain the chlorpheniramine like that of uh, reswas syrup right so according to the quality of cough the treatment has to be decided right this is for expectoration while for cough suppression dextromethorphan dextromethorphan or chlorpheniramine is preferred one right so this tablet is for only expectoration not for dry cough all right now the suppose the patient uh, develop acidity you know because all of this medication patient can develop gastritis for that uh, antacid can be given particularly rebeprazole 20 mg od once a day right If the patient is complaining of vomiting, then domperidone or ondansetron can be added in the prescription. And suppose the patient is feeling much, very, very much weakness and fatigue, then protein powder or neurobion injection can be given. Right? All right. And now, friends, uh, which could be the investigation that has to be done in the COVID nineteen infection? Suppose you have the COVID nineteen, then which investigation will you do? So, friends, first of all, remember that. if you have the covid 19 then at every 4 hourly up to 10 days measure your oxygen level and it has to be measured with pulse oximeter so if you don't have pulse oximeter then purchase it my friends so first of all oxygen has to be monitored it should remain above 94 if it is below 92 or 93 then you have to immediately consult your physician and you might need steroid right so check the oxygen second investigation you have to do is crp and d dimer right crp and d dimer and it is advisable that you have to do both this investigation on your second day of symptom on the sixth day of symptom and on the eighth day right especially on the sixth day of your symptom it is a very vital to do the crp and d dimer because this is the time when steroid need to be added if your crp and d dimer is high because on the sixth day of your symptom six or seventh day if the crp and the d dimer is high the steroid need to be added in the prescription right il6 is also one of the inflammatory marker right it it is a marker of cytokine storm so if it is elevated tocilizumab like like that of injection might be needed another inflammatory marker that can be done is ferritin ldh and procalcitonin by which we can have idea that uh, how much inflammation is there in the 
body right so these are the inflammatory marker that can be investigation among all these the most important one is crp and d dimer don't forget that my friends right with these two marker you can prevent the mortality it's a life saving investigations all right one more investigation that has to be done is uh, cbc right if in the cbc neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio if nlr ratio is greater than 3.2 then it could be suggestive of serious covid-19 infection in which the steroid need to be started right so cbc also should be done as a investigation and my friends uh, remember that uh, these are the drugs that can be used in covid-19 but if the infection is severe right then sometime uh, the steroid also is not enough patient can undergo acute respiratory distress syndrome of the lung right the lung could be infected so much that there is a extensive degree of fibrosis in the lung and the patient cannot able to maintain the oxygen level the oxygen level could be below 90% in such case the oxygen therapy can be started right the oxygen therapy should be given in the severe covid-19 infection the oxygen therapy could be given in the form of mask right it can be given from mask or it can be given via ventilator right so the mask high flow oxygen right all that are initial mode of oxygen therapy but if the high flow oxygen cannot able to maintain the oxygen level in the body right if the mask breathing is not enough then patient might need might need ventilator therapy for the oxygen right patient might need bipap ventilator or invasive ventilator and when the patient is on ventilator the condition could be very severe right the prognosis is not good in the invasive ventilator in the bipap ventilator the patient can survive but in invasive ventilator it's very difficult to survive the patient so this is the overview of how the covid-19 patient can be managed right hope this video will be useful for you if you like this video then like share and subscribe the channel and spread in your relatives in your friends likes right so that it can be useful for all okay thank you take care and bye bye see you soon with the next video of pathology okay take care bye bye